Hi, good afternoon, everybody who is coming in so far. Um, I would love to invite you as we are waiting for people to come in. If you could, in the chat box, share your name, your location, and your position, if you like, um, that would be great. And I also would invite you to answer the following question about what I call the three Bs, which is, where is stress showing up in your life right now? And based on the three Bs, stress could be showing up in your beliefs, your thoughts, um, your body. It could be stress showing up such as headaches or a queasy stomach, or it might be your behavior, which for me is mindlessly like, you know, scrolling through social media. So if you could, one, uh, welcome to those who are coming in, uh, put your name, uh, location and position, and also answer the question, where is stress showing up in your life right now based on the screen, on the slide that shows the three Bs, beliefs, bodies, and behavior, that would be wonderful. And just one more time, as people are coming in, I would love to invite you to uh, share your name, your location, and your position. I see, oh, lots of people here. And um, also, if you could answer the question, where are you seeing stress in your life right now? And on the slide, you'll see uh, three sections, beliefs, body, and behavior. And so uh, stress can show up in your beliefs, like maybe what your thoughts are. Are you having extreme thoughts? Like I'm terrible at this, I'm okay at this. Or it could be you're seeing stress in your body, which is you know like your shoulders are tense or your jaw is locked. Um, or it could be in your behavior, such as mindlessly going to the refrigerator at random hours of the day. Um, if you would please share where you see stress showing up for yourself right now um, in the chat box, that'd be great. I see someone saying it's showing up in body and neck pain. Absolutely. And uh, spending too much time reading comments on social media. I hear that. Um, I also see for stress. Oh, yeah. Showing up in both body and behavior. Mindless snacking. I've been there. <laughs> behavior all around overeating. Um, it's definitely not a surprise that I think most of us would have a theme of food being a part of it during this time, which is normal. And with that, I would love to get going. I appreciate all of your responses. And I would like to officially invite you to today's workshop, which is Supporting Staff and Student Health, Kaiser Permanente's Resilience in School Environments. And we are really, really grateful to be joined by you today because Right now, especially social emotional health, we know that the, your, the social emotional health of your staff, students, communities, families is at the top of your mind. And so to talk logistics real quickly, we have a wonderful moderator today. Heather, would you like to introduce yourself real quickly? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm the Central Valley Coordinator for the School-Based Health Alliance. Glad to see you all. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much, Heather. And Heather is going to be uh, so wonderful in helping us with any um, logistical issues or questions that we might have. And so, you know, just real quickly, this is another session. The session, like all sessions, are being recorded, and it will go to 1.30. And if you are having any issues, please send a message in the chat box and we will make sure to help you. And then finally, there will be a Q&A at the end of the presentation. So if you have a paper or you know nearby or a iPad or whatever, please jot down your questions as you go so that we can have a really great conversation at the end. So sorry. now I would love, oh, no problem. Do you have something you wanna grab? Yeah, um, so there should be a Q&A box as well for them that um, and that we can see in their um, uh, it, right next to the chat button. There's a Q&A button 
that they can type um, their questions in and we can see them as well. Excellent, thank you. Thank uh -huh. you so much. And so now I would love to take a moment so that the presenters who are here today can introduce themselves to you so you can get to know who you will be hearing from today. And um, I would love to turn it over to Stacy now. Great, thanks Deb. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Stacey Boretsky. I'm a project manager with Kaiser Permanente Community Health in Southern California. Um, in my role, I work primarily on the Thriving Schools Initiative, which is a national initiative at Kaiser Permanente. And I'll share a little bit more about that in a minute, but I support the implementation of that initiative at the regional level here for Southern California. And um, I'm currently working out of my apartment in Los Angeles, but I am originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So an East, East Coaster at heart um, and a Steelers fan. So go Steelers to any other fans out there. Um, and with that, I'll pass it over to you, Jennifer. Sorry, I'm on mute. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Jennifer Taylor with The Better Way. I am a school-based mental health clinician and I'm assigned here at Fairfield High. I've been here for roughly 20 months. And if we're gonna talk about hobbies, photography is my thing with also watercoloring. That was my new COVID um, hobby now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Will Cushman. I'm principal of Fairfield High School, where I've been for uh, principal for the last five years. I've been in administration for nine years. Uh, Fairfield is about halfway between San Francisco and Sacramento, just to give you an idea where we're at. Um, I'm terrible with technology. I'll share that right now. I was just in the chat, like lighting it up, being like, oh, this is about me. And then one of the other presenters was like, oh, Will, that didn't go to everybody. So I'm telling you now, if the system the system comes uh, crashing down, it, it was me. So good to be with you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> well, uh, Jennifer and Stacy, thank you for um, uh, um, uh, sharing your name and everything. Um, and oh, and for myself, my name is Deb Cuny and I am the RISE manager and I'm right here in Northern California and I work with three different districts um, but my office is in Oakland, California, and I'm really looking forward to just getting to share RISE with you today. And with that, I just want to get right into it and turn it back over to Stacy, who's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, Kaiser Permanente and Thriving Schools. Great, thanks. So I'll just, I'll start by providing just a, a brief overview on Kaiser Permanente and our Thriving Schools initiative. And then I will hand it back to Dev to talk about RISE. Um, so, you know, if you live in Southern California or in California in general, you are probably somewhat familiar with Kaiser Permanente. Um, but what you may not know is that we deliver care to over 12 million people in eight regions across the country with 39 hospitals and 701 medical offices. We do, however, believe that health doesn't happen only in those medical offices, but health reaches beyond and into the communities where we live, learn, work, play, pray, and age. And that's why community health is such a large part of our mission. You can go to the next slide. So at Kaiser, we have an intentional focus on school health, and we do this for a few reasons. And I know I am speaking to the choir here when I say that education is one of, if not the most important predictors of health outcomes, and that health and education are inextricably linked. Schools present a great opportunity to support health with interventions in and around school settings, making significant impacts on health behaviors. And last, that schools are natural places where we can offer expertise and resources to support a healthy workplace. And that this is part of our business imperative with one in five KP members being in a school every weekday. So throughout all of our work in schools, there is a focus on the health and well-being of school staff and educators. Go to the next slide. So we focus on school health at, at some level for over 35 years through community health initiatives. We have our educational theater program, uh, workforce health, health education, um, on-site school-based health clinics, and, and, and more. Um, but in 2013, we officially launched the Thriving Schools Initiative, 
which is enterprise wide, meaning that it reaches all eight of our regions and it involves not only community health, but many other departments in our organization. Thriving Schools aims to engage the whole school community to create a culture of health and wellness that supports the physical, the mental and social health needs of educators, staff and students. And to do this, we use a policy systems and environmental change approach. We of course do not do this work alone. We have many local, regional and national partners, including the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, who is one of our longtime national partners in this work. So historically, Thriving Schools has focused on heal or healthy eating, active living. And through that work, we've supported schools with their uh, nutritional and physical activity needs. But our newest initiative developed under Thriving Schools and what we'll be talking about today is RISE or resilience in school environments. And I won't say too much about this since Dev is gonna cover that, but just that RISE is grounded in the research behind ACEs or adverse childhood experiences and focuses on increasing student and staff resilience. And you know, I also wanna share that like most organizations did this year, starting in March, we needed to adapt and pivot our work to meet the emerging needs of schools brought on by the pandemic. And that includes the impact that that is having on the social emotional well being of students, families, educators, and school staff. And because RISE, it already helps to address these needs. This was an area that we doubled down in and accelerated to support schools and districts during this time. We know that schools and districts are already doing a lot in this space, but what RISE does is it helps to create the conditions for how to make trauma-informed initiatives more successful and sustainable in the long term. Um, that's why we're just really, really excited to be partnering with the Alliance for a Healthier Generation on this and that we you know, have this opportunity today to spend time with all of you and, and uh, share the great work. So with that, I will turn it back over to you, Dev. Well, thank you so much, Stacy. Um, so, as we move forward, I would love to start with setting some attention, some intentions for our time together. Um, the first part is going to be just learning about Rise, the why, the what, and the how. What is it? Which then will lead into talking about the Rise Index as well as free resources that we have on the Healthier Generation Action Center, which is at healthiergeneration.org. We can send that link later. Um, and then we will go into, and this I will say is my favorite part, is we are going to have a panel where Jennifer and Will and Stacy are going to be talking about what does RISE look like at the school, like as it's happening right now. And that will be specifically at Fairfield High School in Fairfield Sassoon dis District. And then finally, I will talk about how you all can get involved with RISE and our virtual support team and like I said earlier, we're going to have a Q&A time. So I, I hope that you collect your questions because I'm really looking forward to having a conversation where all of the panelists will be involved. So at Healthier Generation, our mission is to empower kids to develop lifelong healthy habits by ensuring the environments that surround them support their physical, social, and emotional health. So one of the most important environments that we know exists in a child's life is the school. And that means we're actually talking about teachers and staff as a part of that environment. Um, we believe KP at Healthier Generations as a part of RISE that happy, healthy kids start with happy, healthy adults. So with that in mind, we work to address multiple influences on a child's health and well being, which includes the social emotional health of the adults in their lives. And I'm going to emphasize that throughout the whole thing that social emotional health is for students and also for adults. So, why rise? I've had people ask me, like, given everything that is going on right now with COVID, everything 2020, is rise even relevant during this time? And, you know, what I will say is I would have said the same answer pre-COVID as now, but especially now, um, it is absolutely and fully relevant to what we're dealing with. Because in particular, during this difficult time in our world's history, we're actually all seeing firsthand all the elements that aren't in place for the social emotional health of children, which as we all know, 
impacts their ability to learn and have academic success. And so right now, it is vital more than ever that we continue to build resilient school districts and schools for children and the adults in their lives. And we are hearing from districts and school leadership just like you who are all saying the same that social emotional health is a major component of learning right now. And as you can see, like the research has always been there and it shows that there is an overwhelming need, but also a desire for social emotional health to be prioritized in education. How it shows up is of course gonna be different depending on the members of the school and the district. But one thing that is clear is that it shows up for all of us. And so continuing on this students in teachers uh, line of thinking, we often talk about the social emotional health of students, it's important. But we also know research shows that schools function best when the students and the staff are happy and healthy. And so for our students, like we know social emotional skills can improve student behavior, academic performance, college career readiness. And that's what we want. We want for our students, we want to help them to be in a position where they feel physically and mentally safe and secure to learn and become good citizens and good humans. And so as you can guess, the social emotional health of students is also linked to the social emotional health of the adults in their lives. So if a teacher is burned out, for example, guess who's going to receive the impact of that? It's gonna be the students, but not just the students, also our colleagues. So the good news about this is on the flip side is that when a teacher has coping strategies or ways in which that they can emotionally regulate, then that ultimately helps the whole school community. It helps everybody. And we at RISE, what we wanna do is build resilient schools to help build resilient and prosperous communities. And I really love this fact of for every dollar invested, there is 11 times the monetary return of social emotional initiatives. That's huge. So at this moment, I would love to invite you into doing a chat box activity um, and would ask you to imagine a resilient school. That might be your school or a school you are somehow connected to. And if you're not a part of a school on this, it might be an organization that you're a part of that you could probably apply this to, to some extent. And I would like you to imagine what does a resilient school look like? And things to consider are, what do the folks in the building look and feel like at a resilient school? Or what practices are there? What practices help make a resilient school? or what words come to mind when you hear resilient school. If you could take a minute and please share with the rest of us in the chat box, what does a resilient school look like for you? Okay, I see a place where adults and students have resources available to support issues, a place that's safe. For me, it's a place where, you know, adults and students feel like they can bring up, you know, hard conversations and being able to feel safe to talk about their emotions. I see it's mindfulness practiced by teachers with students in the daily classroom routines or emotional safety, relationship-based connection and care. Teachers are supported and given space for reflective practices. Thank you. I also see people are happy to be at work in school. Adults who are informed and compassionate, a safe and well-resourced place that supports staff and students. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And I agree with all of the above. Oh, one or a strong connection, sense of community, supportive staff, open door policy. Thank you. So thank you for participating in that. And if you're still thinking about it, like maybe hearing the rest of the, the presentation will give you ideas of what it could look like if you're wondering. And so 
moving forward, our goal, I want to be clear, is not to be just another initiative. And I always, I've worked with a lot of principals in my time. And one thing that I have seen as a theme is tons and tons of binders in their office on the shelf. And I'm, I always call them binder programs. All the programs that come in to, you know, to be like, try this, try that, try that. And one thing that we know at RISE is that we know about initiative fatigue or binder fatigue. And that is why we have created an initiative where we are really aiming to meet you where you're at, to see what you're already doing, where you're already succeeding and where you want to grow. So the aim is to create and integrate a complementary whole school focus on increasing student and staff resilience through the implementation of one, policies. So we're talking policies, how they're created, whose voices are present and missing and how policies are reinforced by leadership throughout the district schools. And then we're also talking about practices. So oftentimes practices serve as informal policies and can really impact the culture of a district or school. So we can help identify what is working and also what might need improvements or adjustments based on your needs and context. So then we also look at systems, which are really about identifying how policies and practices either work together or don't work together. And we help pinpoint to what extent these are communicated and reinforced, what audiences they serve and who is missing, and do so through a continuous improvement and feedback loop. And then finally, through RISE, districts and schools will work together to transform their school culture, the whole environment, to include social emotional health as a vital component of a thriving school where, yet again, all students and staff feel safe and supported. So now I want to talk about RISE goals. And I'm going to start with increased staff job satisfaction and reducing staff stress. So an example of how RISE can work with your school and your district might be providing staff a professional learning opportunity around recognizing signs of burnout and providing them with practical tools and strategies to start moving out of the cycle of burnout. The next one is improve safety, connectedness, relationships among students and staff. So for example, we work with schools and districts to map out their disciplinary practices and provide resources and guidance on making practices and policies trauma-informed and also student-centered. And the next one is increasing SEL skills among students and staff. So what this might look like is training staff in classroom management strategies around resilience and social emotional learning. But it is also, and again, I'm gonna keep saying this, it's also an opportunity to teach staff how to address their own social emotional health. And the same strategies that we use with staff can also translate to students. And that's what makes it great is taking care of ourselves as the staff is taking care of our students. And finally, increasing mental health supports. So we help guide this by increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of all mental health supports by creating processes to collaborate with in-school and community-based mental health providers. So now I'm gonna go into the RISE Index and you've heard me mention it a few times thus far. And what it is, is it is an assessment and tool that is central to the RISE initiative. It not only helps assess school and district policies, practices, systems, and environments, like I just talked about, but it also provides strategies to help leadership teams achieve goals and make impactful change. So where did the RISE Index come from? Stacy mentioned when we started, um, about the research behind adverse childhood experiences, which a lot of us know as ACEs. So with the research with ACEs coupled with an extensive literature review of the social emotional health field, we were able to start creating this index. We also pulled from existing tools that have been and continue to be used in the field. And in addition, the RISE index was vetted by an advisory committee of health and education experts and practitioners from across the country and before we even published it last year in September, it was pi piloted across seven sites to determine relevancy and adaptability. So to go through an example of the school edition one, um, going back to the notion that schools function best when students and staff are happy. 
So the RISE index begins with school and staff well-being. This is the section that primarily starts and stops with staff, making sure topics like burnout, compassion fatigue, work-life balance, and building meaningful connections with colleagues are addressed. The next one is school systems. And the school system section really looks to what extent schools are ready to successfully implement to ensure the school environment is building its resilience. So for example, there are items in there that look at the systems in place for communication and continuous improvement processes. So a lot of the items in this section really help build a solid foundation for anything meaningful to take place in schools. And the next one is universal prevention strategy. So for example, if your school decides to focus on creating calming spaces for students or student-centered discipline, RISE will use what we call our six-step process to help create relevant and sustainable change using these universal preven uh, prevention strategies. And so the next one is targeted intervention strategies. And this is one where we become more specific around these strategies, which really focuses on a subset of the school population who requires some more attention or a different way of communication. And finally, this brings us to collaboration, which is really the underlying thesis. I love that, an underlying thesis that we have for the RISE Index, but also the RISE Initiative as a whole. And that's because no community can have positive change without collaboration. And I'm actually going to move through right now and give you, we also have a district edition, as you can see. So the district is, is uh, asked and invited to also submit or do a RISE assessment in addition to the school. That is an extremely important opportunity, especially with larger districts that we can find in California, because having the district involved can help guarantee more support and more resources. So if you are looking at, at doing this, I would strongly urge that this is both a school and district. And so quickly, the district index includes the district leadership team, the di district staff well-being, just like at the staff level, district-wide policies and procedures, and district-level collaboration. So as you can see, there's a lot of similarities between the student and the, and the district, which makes sense. Um, and so as you know, schools are working and districts are working at the same time, the work will become more and more um, integrated in working with each other and supporting each other. And so um, the last part of this index is showing an example of a question. And this is an, a question that you can see both on the district and the stu in a student, or sorry, school index. And it is a staff well-being example. Does your district student, does your district or school provide opportunities for district level staff to recognize accomplishments and display gratitude towards each other? So, you know, when filling out this assessment, you have options of not in place, partially in place, mostly in place, and fully in place. So not in place means you don't see it, you know, at this, at this point. Partially is that you might see it on some level, like somewhere there is gratitude happening and you see it and that's wonderful. Two, mostly, but you know that there's more that could happen. And then three, which is fully in place, which means that staff is being recognized and gratitude is being shared at least monthly. And so with that, this last section, and then we're gonna go into the panel, is uh, regarding what I mentioned earlier, the Healthier Generation Action Center. Um, you can go to this by going to the Healthier Generation website, which is healthiergeneration.org. And there you will find free resources that we offer that will help you take you through everything that I just shared you and also to show you as a school and district how to take action. And so the, uh, components of the action center include the RISE index that we just talked about, an action plan, which is part of the process of figuring out what are your goals that you're going to be working on as a school or district level. And then we also have a bunch of on-demand trainings that you can use anytime if you want to send it in a weekly update to your teachers or you find it's a great way to do a, you know, a PD. Um, and then we also have a bunch of other resources to support all of your social emotional health work that is happening right now. And then finally, when your school or your district sign up, we have a leadership team roadmap that really breaks down and helps guide you through this process of how to go from planning into action. So 
Now that you were able to see a little bit about the RISE Index and uh, see some free resources, I would love to invite Stacy and Jennifer and Will into a conversation to talk about what does RISE look like right now at Fairfield High School? And I'm gonna turn it over to you now, Stacy. and thank you all for your time so far. Thanks, Dev. And I'll just uh, share that, you know, I'm really excited about having this chance to talk to both of you about your story and the great work happening at Fairfield High School. Um, I'll be moderating this section. And so I'll ask Will and Jennifer a few questions about the work they're doing to support students, staff, and families with social emotional well being and resiliency. But just to note, um, as we're chatting, please feel free to use the chat box to ask questions. We will have time at the end for QA, and uh, Dev is going to be monitoring that chat box. So let me just jump right in. Uh, will, this first question is for you. Often, you know, we hear that getting started with a new initiative can feel overwhelming and it can feel like one more thing that's being added to our already very full plates, especially with all the unique challenges that this year has brought for schools. So can you share how you gained staff buy-in and how has RISE helped to enhance the work um, that Fairfield was doing around social emotional well-being? Oh, well, thank you for the op opportunity today. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a, a different situation at Fairfield High School. And so I, I need to go into kind of our story a little bit so that it, it makes sense um, because we already had buy-in by the time RISE came along. So uh, in December of 2017, we had a recent graduate named Chelsea Fontalera who took her own life. And she was well-connected and well-loved on campus and it had a chilling impact on campus. It's like campus kind of shut down for what felt like weeks. Um, it was like our grief counselors needed grief counselors. You know what I mean? Like it, it was bad. And so um, nothing good came of, of Chelsea's passing, but I think if there's a silver lining, it's that we got a, a crash course on how to take better care of one another, if that makes sense. Uh, when 2018 started, right out the box, we had a, a tragedy. It was, a, it was a, a gang shooting. And then about a month later, we had another student who, who died, this time in a car accident. And it just kept happening again and again. And when you added up the students, the, the recent graduates, and a, a staff member, we had eight deaths, eight in that one year, which was more than all the other years uh, combined in my experience. And so um, by the time our staff member died, while on vacation in Jerusalem, by the way, um, the, the, I, was, I was fried. I called a staff meeting and I said, we're, we're throwing out the playbook, you know, and um, forget everything we're doing. And, and schools are always doing a hundred things. You're, you're doing small group instruction and DBIS and academic conversations. And, you know, the, the list goes on, all the, all the best practices in education. And I, I told my staff to stop, just, I, I, we, can't, we can't move forward. We have to stop and process. And so forget about test scores, forget about our data, just focus on taking care of one another and, and loving on kids. Um, and they did. You would, uh, you'd walk through the, the front office and you'd see a, a group counseling session. You know, you'd walk into a math class and instead of math, they were, they were having a, a, you know, students in a feeling circle. Um, and we absolutely needed that. And I'm sorry for the long-winded response. There'll be a meal break. I'm sorry. Um, but we absolutely like needed that, right? And, and I just, I accepted that, you know what, our data is going to be awful and it is what it is. But but I, for, as a person, I just, I needed to just wrap my school in a, in a hug, I felt like. And, um, and then, but here's the kicker, you know, when our data came in, math scores went up. English scores went way up. I mean, the, the, our district went down, our school went way up. Uh, suspension rates dropped by over 12%. Uh, graduation rate went up almost 4%. Uh, 
we excelled in nearly every single metric. And so it became very clear to me that, that um, wellness isn't, as you put it, wellness isn't one more thing. This isn't one more thing, it's everything. And so when you talk about like buy-in for Rise, we were already sold. We were, we were drinking that Kool-Aid big time. Uh, you know what I mean? So Rise has helped, they, they do, it's trainings, it's improvements, it's support. It's, it's, it's all that, but for me, um, at, at Fairfield High School, what RISE really brought to the table was kind of opening my eyes to understanding that any mental health initiative has to start with a critical mass of staff. Like you, you can't just start with your, your counseling team running mental health or, or wellness. It has to start with your whole staff, understanding how they themselves process stress and then giving them toolkits to cope with their own stress so that they can turn around and identify and support uh, struggling students. So it's kind of like that analogy where if you don't know how to swim, don't jump into in the water to save someone from drowning because now there's two people from that are drowning. You know, you got you got to build capacity with your staff and leverage school-wide support for students, and that's how you really get that momentum. But but. Um, about buy-in, I mean, we, we were already sold just from what we had just experienced. So I hope that was some kind of answer to the question. If not, yes. I, can, I can try again. Yes, no, that was great. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And and uh, I really like the, the critical mass of staff and how important that is as a starting point. Um, so thank you, Will, for that. Jennifer, I'll virtually turn to you. Uh, you've worked with Fairfield High School for um, almost two years now. One of the areas RISE focuses on that Dev shared in the overview is targeted intervention strategies. Can you share how your organization partners with Fairfield to support targeted social, emotional, and behavioral interventions for students? Yes, um, thank you for having me and thank you for the question. Um, yes, from a better way, we are, um, of course, a mental health support and we, um, we're um, put in the schools through the, through the district in the county. And I initially came here with under the Kaiser Initiative Grant for um, trauma-informed. And RISE was already here when I got here. <laughs> they, they were taking on um, a lot of the philosophy and also the, um, the resources were available and they were where, you know, they, they were, had their ear you know, um, about mental health. Well, from our perspective is we wanted to provide what the student need. And we got that through, of course, conversations with Will, the counselors and um, teachers, what they saw the student might need. So we support it through having individual counseling and addressing the social, um, emotional and social needs of the students and also through groups that we provide here at, um, at uh, Fairfield High. And that's according to what the need is of the student, not according to the need of the professional that comes in. If the student needs anxiety and, and coping skills, um, that's what we address. If the student needs grief, because there is a, you know, we've had a significant amount of grief here, um, then we provide that grief component for the students. And if we feel that there is more individual work that needs done, then we work with the student individually, of course, with all the um, approvals through parents and guardians. Um, and we're constant, I'm in constant contact with the counselors and Will on um, what's going on. And we're part of a um, counseling group where we talk about um, how can we address what's going on and also about the future. What's, what's maybe coming up? How can we address some needs to fine tune what we um, need for our students and our staff? And that is, um, th that's what I feel in my experience. This is kind of the beautiful piece here is that the staff is, more, is willing to open up and talk about what the student need and what they need and um, come in and have a conversation on that too. So, we're open for whatever the need is to the student and to the, um, and to the staff also, 
And, um, and we adjusted for that because we're, I wanna always emphasize we're need-based and what that need is, is where we need to go. I think that's it. I hope I answered that. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jennifer. Thanks so much. And just a reminder to the group that you can ask questions in the chat box as well. Um, so uh, just you know, put, put those in there so we can answer those at the Q&A section. So Will, you know, you touched briefly on this in your response, but can you share and expand on how you've seen RISE shift the culture at Fairfield to really embrace that whole school focus on social emotional well-being and resiliency? Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> poor Dev, by the way, I, I absolutely just love Dev. Dev's been my sounding board for everything. Um, and so, as you may have noticed, I get really excited and then I turn into like Sonic the Hedgehog with ADHD. And so <laughs> I start just wanting to pile on, you know, you, you get, I, I was understanding that wellness was so important. And so I just wanted to, okay, we could do this and we could do a staff wellness center and a student wellness center and we can, oh, we'll do mindfulness and we can do run addiction groups. And you just start like, you know, you, 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 you find what you think is like going to help and you just start wanting to pile it on for your, for your people, your, your kids and your staff. And so um, that, that rise index that Deb was talking about is, is so important because if you do it right, um, the first time I just did it myself and I was like, mm, this isn't right. Uh, you really got to sit down with your team and really process, really think about and reflect on where are we, where do we want to go, what are our needs. Um, and so part of the, 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 one of the great pieces about RISE for me in, in, and uh, with Dev is really just like um, it, keeping you centered on your plan and like, go, let's go back to the end. Of, okay, Will. Let's go back to the index. Like, where did we say or are the areas to work on? And it, it really focuses you on, on that roadmap. Um, and so you, you got to keep doing that when, uh, because there's so much out there, right? And so you got to stop and think, okay, is, is what we want to do in line with our plan? Is, is it in line with that, with that index? And so that's been kind of a, a cultural shift that, that has helped me focus because otherwise we'd be doing a thousand different things, none of which we'd be doing particularly well, right? Um, and, and in education, you, you have the two main pillars. And, and so it's, uh, you know, anytime something comes, comes around, you think, okay, what, it, what is the impact on student achievement? You know, how's it gonna impact students? And then that second one that can be a killer is what is the, the impact on our resources? You know, how much is it gonna cost? Uh, and really, the, the shift with RISE is adding a third pillar, what is the impact on wellness? And that really has to be not just a thing or a consideration, it has to be the lens through which you really start viewing everything you're doing on, on campus. Um, so it, it, it's absolutely a, a culture shift and, and RISE, Dev, and, and Kaiser have been there uh, with us nearly every step of the way. So. Thanks, Well, thanks so much. I love that third pillar, <laughs> should add that, <laughs> thanks. Um, so Jennifer, I have a similar question for you and as a community partner, you have a unique perspective and engage with students and staff in somewhat of a different way. And so from your perspective, how have you seen RISE uh, shift the culture at Fairfield? I, um, it's the conversation with staff, it's the conversation with teachers, it's the conversation that we can talk about this that is impactful. And in my years of experience over, you know, jobs and stuff, I think this is the first school that has, that that is at the welcome mat, you know? It's like, oh, what, we can talk about this? <laughs> Yeah, okay, we don't have to kind of go behind the doors. You know, we can talk about um, our, our emotional health and the students and the teachers. I mean, that's like fantastic. 
So that's the shift. You know, it 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 makes the conversation um, easy, fluid, and it's not. It's helping to remove the stigma of talking about mental health, social emotional issues, because that was, you know, that's a that's a stigma that isn't working, <laughs> right? It's we're we're opening up the rice has allowed the the doors to be open and to keep that conversation um, fluid amongst everyone, from the hall monitors to you know everyone everyone. That's the shift that I've noticed looking from the outside. And I really appreciate this because um, then everybody seeks help a little more easier. You know, it doesn't feel like there's several barriers to get to some kind of help and support. And that is, um, that's a way of having good health. So I, that's my observation of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, what I'm hearing from both of you is just how important that the relationships and that open communication is um, in in the school community and and with the partners. So I I just want to express my gratitude and appreciation to both of you um, for all the work you're doing and for taking time today to to share with us. Um, so now I I'd, I'd like to open it up for Q and A in the chat. Um, Questions can be for Deb, for myself, for Jennifer, or Will, for the group. Please ask away. Um, and I'll pass it back to you, Dev, since I know you've been monitoring the chat. Yeah, thank you. And some of these are overall like questions. Again, please feel free to ask questions to anyone on the on a on the panel. Um, one question I see is how has the RISE framework pivoted with distance learning? Is there anything you've changed which has been successful and you might continue doing once students go back in person? So, you've changed which has been successful and you might continue doing once they go back in person. I mean, all I will say, just speaking from the RISE uh, side, when the pandemic hit, we immediately started creating uh, what we call the playbook. And it's a series of strategies that were very much focused on um, being in a crisis environment like COVID and with COVID and how to do so virtually. And so what I would strongly encourage is, is looking up, it's in thriving schools. I don't, you know, if like I could probably look it up in a second, but it's thriving schools KP and they have the playbook on their website. So it's thriving schools at Kaiser Permanente, or you can go to healthiergenerations.org registered for the Action Center and also find the playbook there. But there's a lot of examples of strategies and tools that schools from across the country are using right now to help with working on a virtual uh, distance learning hybrid, both virtually hybrid, all, all of the above. Since I realize um, we have all of it happening right now in the country. Oh, good, thank you. Okay, putting it. Um, Another question is for the RISE initiative, is there a way for me to monitor the progress for each school from a district level? Like I, I can answer that again, like uh, in the action center, um, the leadership team at the district level has access to being able to see other schools, but we can also provide that information with working with you along the way with reports and updates so that that information is very important to being able to create and can, you know, and fulfill the strategy that's happening at the district level. Like I said earlier, it's like, ideally the district and the schools will both be working on this and that information both ways is going to be critical for uh, moving it forward. Um, yeah, no problem. And if there are others, there's one um, and pardon me for being bad at acronyms, but SBHC, the, the school-based health center. Answer. Oh yeah, the obvious one. <laughs> 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 Can you? Are you able to answer that at all, Stacey, or is that? <laughs> I would, I, I would say it probably varies um, depending on the school and and on the district. Um, I think this is something that. We've been working closely um, from the Kaiser Permanente perspective with um, the California School-Based Health Alliance on, you know, how uh, we can 
promote and share RISE with the right folks at the school-based health center and then how we can sort of spread um, and integrate the work across the school. Um, so there's certainly um, places that we're identifying and I, I think that's definitely future work that, that we're gonna be partnering on. Thank you, Stacey. And we have a couple more minutes if anyone else has a and a And I mean, I guess while we're waiting, I actually do have one like question that I was curious if you would be willing to answer, Will. Um, you know, we asked earlier on, what do you envision as a resilient school? And so I was immediately in picturing Fairfield High School. And how in your head did you, like, would you answer that? Like, what were your thoughts that came up? Just getting rid of, of all stigmas um, and kind of what, what uh, Jennifer was talking about, um, a class where a student can say, I, I need a mental health minute or I need a, I need a whatever. And then they can seamlessly go to our, our student wellness center, you know, and, and realizing that it's a fluid thing, that, that students are going to have moments of, of peak anxiety. And it's like, hold on, I need, I need a minute. You know, in my generation, if someone had done that in school, like, nope, I'm just going to close my eyes and t take a minute, we would have said, oh, that's a crazy person. Um, but now, uh, just an acceptance that everybody is dealing with stress and life in, in a different way, and that we're going to need those moments in that time. And so, so really, it's just an acceptance of, of each other and, and each other's needs. Um, that's, that's really, I think, the, the fundamental piece. Thank you, Will. And I actually want to ask the same question to you, Jennifer, like in terms of what came might have come to your mind around what it means to you. Well, Will and I are in alignment. <laughs> so <laughs> I do. I believe that um, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm in the same um, in the same on the same street he's on. I do think having a an easy way for um, for students to access um, moments in their day when they feel anxiety or sadness um, and having that space for them and not letting it be an easy way to do this. It doesn't have to um, have a lot of um, permissions to do these things. Yeah, everybody needs to be monitored to a certain level. We understand that. But I wanted, I would love for a student to say, you know what, I just, I need a little tiny break. Give me a minute. And you know what? It is not ridicule. It's not blown out of proportion. It's just a moment, you know? If that consistently happens, then we might need to have a different intervention. But that, but you first gotta have that moment, <laughs> you know? We don't want, I, I, I would like to see where kids don't have to wait till an explosion in order to get attention. The, the attention they need. I, we want to get it at the infancy. And that would be a really healthy thing to have at a school, to be able to have that, that fluid, you need help, we can help you. Okay, next kind of feeling versus it doesn't polarize everyone. Thank you, Jennifer. I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you for doing the panel today. And I just wanna say on a personal level, it is a joy as a person who gets to work with RISE to get to go into schools and to build relationships like this. It's been very meaningful to get to work with you at Fairfield High. And I'm looking forward to the next year. And um, yeah, it really, it, it really is something else to be able to see a school um, grow and expand and deepen in the ways that they love and want, which is all centered on the love, not only of the students, but love and care of the staff. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And so going in um, to, I'm getting, um, like I said at the beginning, I would mention how you all could get involved if you are interested. And so um, let me do this. Um, now that you heard about how RISE is, you know, in a school, it's, I want to share with you more about what I would call our robust virtual support team. Um, so here at RISE, we have a virtual support team of real people that work with you and your staff to help with implementation, providing professional learning opportunities, 
um, accessing resources and navigating technical needs. And so there are people across the country who are already supporting RISE for tons and tons of schools and in, in, in doing great work as a lot of schools are becoming RISE schools and moving forward with this work. So in addition to like say the work that I'm doing in person in NoCal, RISE schools also have access to Alexis, for example, who is our virtual support manager who will support you as you implement RISE. And then there's Yasmin, um, I just love all these people. So anyway, our virtual content manager who you, um, you know, you will meet if you get to be a part of RISE and who will be more than happy to support you with professional learning opportunities. And then there is Nicole, who is a part of the member engagement and support team um, who is available to answer questions and to help you navigate, you know, in, at any time. So um, if you are interested in this, again, you can find us at Healthier Generation um, and uh, uh, be able to fill in and join the Action Center and access the resources and begin this process as a school and or district. And, and so are, if you have, oh, please, yeah. I was just gonna share Deb, that Heather just shared in the chat box, the link to access three of our uh, one page handouts with more information on that. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, and so like, Winding down, like I really just want to say thank you to everybody for taking time today. Like I realize that you have, you're on the third day of your conference and you have been filled up and saturated with a lot of very critical and important information. So I appreciate you also joining us and getting to hear a little bit more about RISE, but really how RISE works and, and the, in the day to day. And please feel free at any point to reach out to us at Healthier Generation. Um, we would love to talk to you, answer questions. If you're exploring what does it mean to bring RISE on, um, it would be a joy for all of us because we really all believe in this work very much and know again, just how important it is any time <laughs> for any school. Like this was something that we were talking about pre-COVID, but even now, even more so, like we realize that this is absolutely a top priority to being able to give the care and love and resources that our students, and I'll say it one more time, and adults also need and deserve. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer, Will, Stacy, and thank you, Heather, for helping us um, with this presentation. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your conference and week. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. So just to point out the slides uh, or the recording of the presentation will be here um, on this session website. Um, so you can just come back to the session in a couple of days or so and you'll be able to click watch session and you'll be able to see the recording. And then after that, in a couple of weeks, it'll be available on the CSHA website. So that's all I had. Thank oh, you so much. You, everyone. That's wonderful. Have a great afternoon. You too, thank you. You also, thank you very much for your guidance. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you so much, Jennifer and Will and Stacy. Thank you. No problem. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.